Hey guys, it's Sunday. So, naturally, another video about religion. More importantly, more, more importantly about people who uh, go by what they hear instead of doing their own research. Some people close to me said that they don't like my videos because they're racist, sexist, um, homophobic. I don't see how on that one either. And, uh, what is that, uh, transphobic. Nothing in my videos, any of them, have anything to do with any of the above. They said this because they watched the first two minutes of the very first video and said that, since I was talking about the BLM, that I'm automatically racist about it. Because I was literally portraying the fact that BLM is basically like the KKK in black form, which it is. It's blaming white people for every little thing that ever happened to people. Which is completely wrong. And not just white people, white men. It doesn't say anything about white women. This is everything has to do with white men. You know, uh... What is that other one? Um, it's uh, white privilege. So, the reason why I said this is about religion is because everything they accused me of is in the book that they read. You know, sexism, everything about a female is considered gross and immoral and wrong in the book. Um, racism, own your own slaves. You don't believe me, Exodus 21 tells you. So it does a couple of chapters in Philippians and a couple of chapters all over the book. Um, <clears throat> the only thing that's not in the book that people accuse me of is being a, uh, basically hating people that are transgender, transphobic. I'm not transphobic. I just don't understand how someone could just sit there and say, oh, I'm a man, or oh, I'm a woman, and that's what they are. It's like I always said before, gender is not malleable. That's proven in our in our makeup, in our body, in the way our bodies are made. You know, the way our bodies are created inside of our, inside of our mother's bellies. You know, you're either male or female. There's no in-between. It's like I said before, gender... Dysphoria is what it was called in the 90s, all the way up to about 2000 when this whole transgender thing, saying, oh, I'm a, I'm a man and it's clearly a woman, or I'm a, I'm a woman and it's clearly a man. I don't care if you dress like one, I don't care if you're a man you dress like a woman, or you're a woman you dress like a man. You're still a woman and or a man. There's no in between. And as for the racist thing... I'm not a racist. Like I said, I have black friends. I have Mexican friends. I have a black sister. I have a person that I grew up with that was Mexican that I called my sister as well. You know, how one of my friends that I work with is a Mexican. You know, I am, I'm not racist. And I never once, prom in fact, I'm completely against racism. It's like I'm against homophobia. I'm against, I'm against being a person against the opposite sex you know sexism is bullshit and it goes both ways not just white men can be sexist there are a lot of sexist women out there too and I've met quite a few of them they're called feminists if you will and I mean the third the third wave feminists not the older ones the older ones I agreed with like I said they uh <clears throat> they wanted equal rights equal pay you know all that I agree with it you know, sure, yeah, go for it. You know, a lot of people get mad at me because I quote, I laugh when people make jokes. They're jokes. And a lot of the stuff I say on here are jokes. There's also a lot of stuff I say on here that are fact. That is fact, whichever you, whichever way you prefer to look at it. Now, I've had people tell me I do not have the right to talk about religion because I am not religious. Why? Just because I'm an atheist does not mean I don't know what religion does. More importantly, I don't know what it, I know what it does to people's psyche, what it does to their mind. Religion, especially if you're raised into it, 
it makes you blind to logic. Especially when it comes to basic logical skills. Like, to think for yourself. Or to be able to think. It's like what, uh, it's like what, um, Peterson once said. He said, in order to, eh, in order to have a, th a thought, you have to risk being offensive. And if people don't believe me that religion makes you blind, next time your preacher starts preaching about something that you know is not physically possible, ask him about it. I guarantee they're going to get mad. Or they're going to try to do some other jogging bullshit like most preachers do. They they do this thing that's called dodging, where you'll ask them a question. Just a basic question, easy to answer. And they will jog around the question, completely dodging it, and then try to reform it into their own question for you. That's what a lot of people do when they when they get caught up in a corner. They try that. You know, if someone asks you, if they say, for for example, kids do it too. I mean, they're like the masters of it. You know, did you steal the cookie? If the kid, most kids, but no, 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 I didn't steal the cookie, I didn't steal the cookie. Some will turn it around saying something about, oh, well, mommy said I could or something like that. Basically verifying the fact that they fucked up, but they're not going to admit to it. And I will admit, being human, it is hard to admit when you're wrong. It's also hard to admit when... You've been indoctrinated into something when it's all you know. Now, I've been told I've been very disrespectful to religious people. Well, good. They're disrespectful to me. You know, I'm sorry, but actually not really sorry at all. Like I said, facts don't care about your feelings. You know, I'm not a religious person. I tried the religion route. I've studied Christianity, Catholicism. I know more about the Bible than most preachers do. You know, I study this stuff, for lack of a better word, religiously. You know, just like anything I talk about on these videos, I do extensive research before I talk about them. And like I said, if I'm wrong, and you prove to me that I'm wrong, I'll admit that I was wrong. Even, no matter how hard it is for me to admit it, I'll admit it. You can, sh if you show me the evidence, show me the proof, I was wrong. I'll tell you. <clears throat> it's like uh, when I was talking to those... Flat Earth people, which if you talk to my wife about it, she's fucking annoyed with all the shit. Because for me, when I see stupidity, when I hear stupidity, I just laugh at it. You know, when I hear people say, oh, God made everything in, in 7,000 years. Moron. It's like, okay, so we have trees that are 10,000 plus years old, but God made it in seven. Hmm... Or when they say the Noah's Ark thing actually happened. Bullshit. Or Moses splitting the Red Sea. Bullshit. Um, this guy named Jesus, which was only mentioned in the Bible, was not mentioned anywhere else in all of history. Did all these miracles, raised everybody from the dead, fed thousands with a loaf of bread. Bullshit. You know, I'm sorry, but it's bullshit, man. And when people sit there and try to accuse me of this stuff, that's when I start getting angry. And I'm not like, you know, do you won't like me when I'm angry? I'm not like that. It's just like, dude, when your stupidity, when your indoctrination, when your stupidity, when your, when your thought process is challenged, do you need to have the ammo to back it up? And I do. You want me to show the evidence? I got everything that I've ever studied inside everything that I've studied I've wrote down because I do have a very bad memory you can ask my wife I'm not the best when it comes to memory although with religion I remember a lot because it's being thrown in my face everywhere I go now let's see we talked about the gender dysphoria oh sorry trans what is that trans what trans whatever like I said, if you're a transsexual and you're turning and you're actually going through the transition of becoming the opposite sex, then yeah, sure, I'll call you the pronoun you, you want, which is usually male or female, which actually usually always is male or female. You know, I'm not as literal thinking as Ben Shapiro when I say no matter, even if you do have a cock on you, if you're born a female, you're a female. I'm not like that. Are there dogs barking? 
Nah, he's just looking at us. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I'm not transphobic. I'm not homophobic. One of my best friends here is gay. And I'm pretty sure the one that I work with is gay, too, because I've never seen him with a woman. I know his brother's gay. Damn good hairstylist. Um, you know, I don't hate anybody. You know, life's too short to hate somebody. It's very hard to forgive people. You never forget, you just forgive. And I'm not, and everybody's like, oh, well, that's a Christian thought. No, it's not. It's, it relieves stress. You know, in the end of the day, you need to make yourself happy, like I said in my last video. Don't let everybody judge who you are. You know, with these videos, sometimes, yes, I rant on about some stupid shit that's happened to me. Or I just talk about stupidity in general. Like, for example, the person I was talking about earlier who said that she will, she and the rest of them will never watch my videos because of, quote, the racism in the videos, because I was talking about BLM. It's like, okay, when the BLM's big movement started happening, I started really paying attention because the first thing I thought was, yeah, maybe this is a good idea, you know? Granted, I didn't agree with the term Black Lives Matter. It implies the fact that only Black Lives Matter. But if you actually study it, it doesn't just mean only Black Lives. It's just, it's a tag name for people to, you know, I guess get behind. But, in that aspect, it still has very racial views to it. Like I said, I've done a lot of research on it. I do it all the time. You know, I, I keep up on those. Because they are things that could indeed either make or break America if we have stuff like this. You know, everybody disbands the KKK, good, fuck them, they're a bunch of, it's a hate group. Disband them. Yes, I'm a white dude saying that, and, most, and some of my family members in the South were KKK members. Fuck them, I don't care. They get shot, it wouldn't bother me. Call me heartless, whatever, I don't care. BLM is basically the black version of the KKK. Everything, see, in the KKK's mind, mind, like I said, it's part of my family. I know what the KKK is, just like I know what the skinheads are. You know, these guys, in their ideology, everything that's ever been done wrong to them, anything that they see as wrong is either the government fucking them up or something to do with black people or Mexicans. I don't see why. All they're doing is blaming something else on what's their problem. It's like, it's like I said before. It does not matter what sex you are. It does not matter what color you are. As long as you put your mind to something and you actually do it, you will succeed. But if you do what most people do and you blame somebody else for your fuck-ups, you're just going to keep going deeper and deeper into the hole instead of climbing out of it. <clears throat> Like, it's like I said in my last video, the kid I knew, or the guy I knew in school, who is filthy rich right now, a black dude, he's a CEO of a major, of a major company, you know, and he's black, you know, and I mean black, black, no, no derivatives, he's black, black, coolest kid you'll ever meet, I mean, granted, he was a wannabe gangbanger when he was a kid, I mean, we all have, we go through phases, okay, I mean, in my eyes, gangs are for pussies. That's any game. If you can't fight by yourself, if you can't sit there, put your hands up, risk getting your ass whooped, and you have to pull a gun out on somebody, you're a bitch. If you can't risk taking an ass whooping, you're a bitch. You know, I've won a lot. I've lost a few. But I'm still here. I don't need a bunch of dudes standing behind me. I don't need to get jumped into a gang, which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Hey, you want to be part of this gang? Sure. All right, we got to jump your ass for 90 seconds. Fuck you. You're jumping my ass. I'm going to be going for the throat, man. It's like five of you on me, your asses are going to the hospital. You know, I'm not going to back down. <clears throat> and some of these gangs out there have some of the dumbest things you got to do. Like, like, I don't know if this for sure, but I've heard this one where you actually have to like rob an old lady. Dude, the woman's 80 years old. You really think she has any money to begin with? Why the hell are you going to rob her? You know, See, the whole gang mentality started in prison. Whether anybody believes it or not, it started in prison. I'm not talking about mafia. I'm talking about gangs. Mafia is a family. 
Like literally, usually you can't be in the mafia unless you're Italian or you're part of that Italian family. And gangs, they started in prison due to the fact that the majority of gangs are either black or Mexican. There's not a lot of very, very prominent white gangs out there. I mean, unless you call a skinhead a gang, but they're a bunch of pussies anyway. But, uh, like, here in Dodge City, we deal with Sereños, Norteños, and Mexican Mafia. Again, pansies. I don't care how cool you think you look when you're sagging your jeans. If I can see the crack of your ass, dude, that's not polite. That's disgusting. You know, you can be a wannabe gangbanger and still keep your pants on your hips, man. Nobody wants to see your shit stains on your drawers. And, you know, everybody's like, oh, I jumped this kid because he's wearing red. Why? What if he was just a normal kid walking down the street? He ain't trying to do anything to you. Why do you have to jump his ass? Why do you have to shoot him in the head because he's wearing a different color than you? Like I said, gang mentality is crap. I don't care what color you are. I don't care what nationality you claim to be from. Being part of a gang is dumb. I mean, in prison, like I said, they did it to protect themselves. MS-13 was Mexicans. You know, the Crips and the Bloods are usually together, actually, believe it or not, in major prisons. Everybody's like, oh, when I, if I ever go to the pen, I'm going to be welcome. Not with that attitude, you won't. You might be a hustler in the street, but when you're in there, you're going to be, be you're going to be the one being hustled. And, you know, I pissed off a guy the other day because I told him that I thought that I look at religion kind of like a gang mentality. And this is the reason why. If you're part of a religion and you're a devout part of that religion, like say a devout Christian, you and a bunch of your friends will be more than likely to hate somebody just because they believe something else. Like, here's a great example. Say you're, you're at a Christian outing, if you will. A bunch of your Christian brothers and sisters are out there at a park. Some Muslim dude comes walking by. Are you guys going to go greet him? Or are you guys going to stand away from him? I'd go greet the guy. Because just because he's Muslim doesn't mean he's a fucking terrorist. You know, if you go across seas and you talk to them, they think we're the terrorists. So, I mean, I mean, which one, which one's right here? Granted, I don't believe we should get out of the, get out of the war, or at least I don't, I don't believe we should get out of there. Because if we get out of there, you know, all those terrorist cells, because there are terrorist cells within there, we would, you know, we'd get slaughtered again. We'd get hit again. It's like, would you rather have instant peace or 10 years later we get hit again, just like we did in 9-11? You know, it's a double-edged sword, just like I always say. You know, and one of the main things, and this is back to religion, this is one of the main things. If there was no religion in the world at all, no Christians, no Catholics, no Muslims, no Jewish, no Jewish belief, if it wasn't mainstream, you know, keep it in your household, keep it to yourself, basically. You know, you and your own little community, whatever. Keep it to yourself. Don't use it to try to get an advantage. If nobody used their religion against each other, the world itself would be better. You know, they've been fighting in Afghanistan and Iraq for thousands of years over stupid shit like religion, especially the last thousand years. You know, when, uh, when this whole Muhammad thing came around. When the Quran came out. Same time, coincidentally enough, when the Catholics came out. You know, we would have never had the Salem Witch Trials. We would have never had the, uh, the sacking of Rome or anything like that. Because it was all religious backing. backing. Every one of these fights that we've had in the last... Basically, every war we've had had a religious backing. Everybody's like, oh, what about this one? According to what they were telling us on the news, Arabic people took planes and smacked them into our buildings. 
for one reason only, because we are infidels, a.k.a. we do not believe in what they do, so we deserve to die. That's in their belief. Which, if you look at it, that's actually in the Bible. If someone doesn't believe the way you do, you kill them. I mean, it's written all through the Bible. Just like, uh, like I said, the story of uh, Moses splitting the Red Sea and then going up to Mount Sinai to get the Ten Tablets. Anyway, get, go up there, get the Ten Tablets, come back down because everybody started worshipping a gold bull, melted it down, made him drink it or eat it, whatever. And then, you know, it could have just ha ended there. Nice and peaceful. Nope. Go across, go across over here to the next county, if you will. Slaughter every man, every woman who has known man. In other words, women that are, are not virgins. Slaughter all the boys, but keep the virgin girls as yourself. Keep them as your concubines. Literally meaning, these are your sex slaves. You know, don't treat them right, whatever. Because they didn't treat concubines good worth a shit. You see it in the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. You see it in, this, see it in the story of the dude who married, who had a wife who said she was a sister, so she could be screwing around with the pharaoh. Pharaoh gets pissed, kicked him out, kicks him out of Egypt. You see it all the time. It's written in that Bible like crazy. Just like, uh, what's that one? Incestual stuff is written in the Bible. As a good thing. It's like I was saying about the whole story of uh, Noah's Ark. The story of Noah's Ark, only Noah and his family survived. Which would literally therefore mean that we are all brothers and sisters through Noah, eh, through Noah and all of his family. So we're all products of incest. I'm not mentally handicapped. There's a lot of brilliant people out there. There's whites, there's Mexicans, there's blacks, there's Asians. Hindus, Buddhists, you name it. So where do they all come from? You know, Moses was Egyptian, which would mean that he was obviously from the Middle East. If you do your genealogy test, a lot of us are European. A lot of us are European. Not a lot of us are Egyptian. I mean, one of my sisters has an Egyptian is a descendant of Egyptian. She has Egyptian DNA in her. And another thing. They check DNA. They can tell you where your where your your bloodline comes from. Almost down to the exact year that they moved to the United States or moved across somewhere else. So if that be the case, then if the whole Noah's Ark thing is true, we would all be traced back to Noah. We'd all be traced back to Egypt, and we're not. In fact, they say that the first humans were actually in Africa. Which, to be fair, Egypt is Egypt and all that shit's all over there. So, I mean, I could see where they got the idea from. But, if you trace our DNA back far enough, they say the first tribes were actually in Africa. And that when they expanded across the world... That's how we got our fair skin. That's how we got different eyes, different nose, different languages. And there's another one. And they actually try to explain this in the. They put this in the Bible many, many years after they voted on it. And then I see in council. They put that the reason why God made different languages is because he did not want people to. What was it, revolt against them? Because they are trying to build a tower to go to heaven? I mean, that's just idiocracy right there in its simplest form. That he created different tongues, if you will. Different languages, so people could not conversate. So people could not revolt against him. That doesn't sound like a god to me. God was so scared of these... I mean, like, what is... The only reason why God has power is because people believe in him? So if people stop believing in him, he won't have power. Good, stop believing in his ass. Because as long as there's a, as long as long there's people believing in God, there's going to be hatred towards people. Because everybody has something against somebody if they're, like, 
if it's religious. Homophobia started with religion. Sexism started with religion. Slavery, religion. I mean, the everything that's been done that's fucked up has a religious backing to it. And there's a lot of serial killers out there who say the devil made me do it. The devil was an angel, you jackass. In fact, he was God's favorite angel. In fact, the name Lucifer means bringer of light. So, how in the hell did he do this? Does that mean that the devil has more power than God? Because according to the book, God gave us free will. Yet he has every path that we can possibly take already written down. So we don't have free will. We have a bunch of set paths that he's like, all right, well, here's 20 paths. Here, flip a coin. Let's see what he does. Oh, look, he's going to go be a su he's going to go be a suicide bomber. Oh, look, he's going to go believe in Buddha. Well, fuck him. He's going to die anyway. You know, according to Christianity, if you don't believe in God, if you don't believe in their God, I should say, that you're going to hell. There's more Buddhists, Hindus, and a lot more other people out there than there are Christians. Christians, I'd say, what, about three million? Maybe five? Almost everybody in China, Japan, India, Tibet, all those places, almost all these guys are either Buddhists or Hindus or atheists. That's like two-thirds of the planet right there getting washed out just because they don't believe in your God. How immoral is that? You know, one of the things that a lot of people tell me, especially when they come from, from across there, is that American, this is why everybody has a big distaste towards Americans. We go to their country, we beat the shit out of them, then we help build them, and then afterwards we send religious zealots across there to brainwash them into a different religion. I mean, yeah, they call them nice people like missionaries, but that's all they are. I mean, to be a missionary, you can't be human. As I looked into it. I was going to be a missionary. Mainly because I just wanted to leave. You know, I didn't care. You can't have sex. Can't smoke. Can't drink. Have to do everything that's charitable. Can't take money. Um, you live out of a backpack, which, you know, I was homeless before, so I know what that's like. But, you know, why? Just let these guys believe what they want to believe. You know, don't... Don't have to sit there and force-feed people religious ideology when they know it's wrong. But, I mean, go ahead. Try telling a Buddhist that his, relig that his religious beliefs are wrong. The Buddhist belief has been around for almost 10,000 years. Same with the Hindu belief. I mean, the earliest earliest documents of these were thousands of years before Ju Judaism, which is where Christianity came from. Because, I mean, if you look at it, Judaism is one of the newest religions out there. It's only about 4,500 4, years old at max. Hinduism and Buddhism are at least 10 10,000 years old, and it's still strong. And I'm sorry, but if I were to walk down a street and I had a choice to go through a crowd of devout Catholics or devout Christians or go through a crowd of devout Buddhists or Hindus, I would go through the Hindus or Buddhists because they're actually peaceful. You know, these guys aren't insanely fucking assholes. Christians can be assholes. Catholics can be assholes. Catholics are extreme assholes, especially little kids, apparently. Anyway, I promise my wife this is going to be a short video. It's about 30 minutes long. Yeah, that's, that's my Sunday special, if you will. Anyway, have a good day. Like, comment, subscribe. Have a good night.